Welcome to Succeed Even If. I'm Tom Marku. And I'm Johanna McLeod. In this episode, we talk about succeed even if you must show charisma, but you're not happy. Joanna, do you think it's possible to show charisma and still at the same time not feel good? I find it hard, but I can sometimes muster it at times. Because I know you, I know that's true. Mm -hmm. I know that there are times where you're going through something really rough, mm -hmm. but you're still able to be in the moment and you're able to interact, let's say at a networking event mm -hmm. or, or even if we're doing a show that you can put yourself into the right space mm -hmm. so that you can be in the moment doing what you need to do. Yeah, I just look at it as a job and it's my job to be pleasant. Right, so that's an interesting thing. To be pleasant is a series of actions. Mm -hmm. One phrase I really dislike is fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. From my training as a performer, as an actor, as a film director, what I notice is act it until you become it. Mm. Act it until you become it. And that's part of what we're doing here with this topic. Succeed even if you must show charisma, but you're not happy. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I want to do is talk about charisma. So what do you feel is charisma, Joanna? I find when somebody is able to connect with you really easily and makes you feel at ease and makes you feel like you're connected to them. Yes. And those are actions in terms of helping someone feel connected to you. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is certain actions will then shift, at least momentarily, feel on the inside. Yes. And so I've worked with different clients. Some have clinical depression. And they tell me that it's like tinnitus. It is like a noise that is always there. Mm -hmm. But you can quiet it down. Even though the tinnitus might be there, you can quiet it down by focusing on the other person. Mm -hmm. And charisma, I, in a number of my books, including Darkest Secrets of Charisma, I talk about three different types of charisma. Now, the charisma we usually think about are those people who seem so natural. Uh -huh. You know, they have this charisma that is magnetic. So I call that magnetic charisma. Mm -hmm. That's when someone walks into the room and everybody looks at them. Now, they can be gifted. They can have a certain type of appearance. I call it stereotypical attractive appearance. Uh -huh. And that's okay. I've worked as a film director with models and actors, people who just have those gifts. They have that voice, the resonant voice, whatever it is. And that's terrific. But good news, and one of my readers of my book, Darker Secrets of Charisma, actually said, here's a book that finally says that we who are introverts can be charismatic. Uh -huh. And the idea is... There's something I call warm trust charisma. Warm trust charisma is when you get distractions out of the way. Oh. So certain behaviors, certain ways you move your body, certain ways you talk, you can get those distractions out of the way, and then you can create that warm connection. Mm -hmm. The other type of charisma that I've written about that I use my own term, natural charm charisma. Mm. Many introverts actually have this natural charm process, which is they're really good listeners one-to-one -one mm -hmm. with one person. So you can use that as an introvert on the stage where you have these series of conversations, somebody on the left, somebody in the middle, somebody on the right, mm -hmm. and you talk with these friendly faces, these friendly people, and you like have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and sometimes you engage them. You ask them questions while you're on the stage, and you look so comfortable because that's your natural charm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to explore the three R's so that you can express charisma even when you're not happy. Just like a pirate. R. Okay. <laughs> not that kind of R. <laughs> Each one of these methods begins with the letter R. And the first one is redesign rules of happiness. Mm, mm -hmm. Joanna, have you met people who don't seem to have the chance to be happy? Yes, I have a particular friend that it just seems like everything is going wrong. Her health is in jeopardy. Her family is in crisis. Right. But she's unhappy because of those two reasons. Well, I expect her to be upset and unhappy, and she is, but she's muscling through it. Hmm. That is an interesting detail. What I've learned is that there's a lot of people, something bad happens during the day, and they feel that that's the day. The mm -hmm. day was a bad day. Mm hmm what I've discovered is that you can have something bad happen during the day and you're totally impacted for an hour, three hours, 15 minutes, 10 mm -hmm. minutes, whatever it is. But you don't have to label the whole day mm -hmm. as being a bad day. It's kind of like my cat magic. 
we have to test his blood because he's diabetic. And for that moment, it's a terrible, terrible thing. But, you know, after a while, he forgets it and goes along with his day. Yeah, I can imagine that it's rough on you, though. Oh, it's very difficult. I don't want to hurt him at all, but he has to get his blood sugar tested. And you have to do it. And I have to do it. So it hurts him for a bit. And hurts me to hurt him. Exactly. So the question is, can you be happy with the day, even though you have to deal with some moments of the day that really breaks your heart? Well, when I see my sweetheart in the morning, it makes me feel good. Oh, terrific. Well, and this is what I want to talk about. Redesign rules for happiness. One thing is that if you decide that the rule for happiness is that I'm not going to have any bad moments like when you have to test the blood and have moments of hurting your cat mm -hmm. to get the blood so that you can test it. If you decide that you that is a reason to be unhappy all day long, then that's what you'll experience. Mm -hmm. So when we redesign the rules for happiness, we realize that there's a number of things that happiness can be if you decide what your rules are. Mm -hmm. For example, Joanna, I've heard you use the phrase calm acceptance. Yes. So that's not joyful. That's not feeling good. No, but, but it's a steady way of being when you're not happy. Yes. And that's that calm acceptance that we were talking about, mm -hmm. is that you're able to accept the things you can't change. Yes. Often with family members or perhaps friends or perhaps different people in the world, you're not going to change them mm -hmm. or change their point of view. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad. I mean, sometimes I've had a couple of friends over the years drift away. They had a certain perception. They didn't know me. Mm, yes, that's always hard. And they didn't want to talk with me. I once talked with a family member. I said, you're not listening to me. Do you want to listen to me? No. Well, they told me what's going on. Mm -hmm. This person was in a space, not maybe two years later, three mm -hmm. years later, maybe something will change. But the point is, at that moment, they had no space for me. Mm -hmm. So, calm acceptance. What we're talking about here is to define, to set up rules for happiness that are open so that you can feel happy and you could say, I'm happy, even though you have trouble in your life. Mm -hmm. If people wait to have no trouble in their life, they may never have an experience of being happy. Mm -hmm. I can be happy at the same time be concerned for my elderly mother mm -hmm. who's having difficulties. I can still be concerned, but in the moment, I can focus on being here with you, being glad that we're having this conversation and sharing this broadcast, mm -hmm. and that can be a type of happiness, which is purpose. So what I want to do is share these different elements of happiness. And if I'm you, so happy you're going to do that. Thank you, which is good because we were on purpose, <laughs> and that's purpose. Calm acceptance. Not to be confused with purpose. Oh, humor. Uh, that could be a part of happiness. Mm -hmm. Some of the funniest people actually have a lot of sadness. You know, yes. stand-up comedians are people who look around and say, this world is not right. And they aim at it. And they say things that we want to say, but they say it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, purpose, calm acceptance, relief. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who really defines happiness as getting the stuff that, like, taxes, paperwork, getting that stuff out of the way and then feeling relief. Ah, that's done. Mm -hmm. Comfort. Moments of joy, progress. I really like progress. Mm -hmm. I like getting things done. I know you. And that leads also to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So progress for me connects to purpose, calm acceptance, and fulfillment. This is all good. And I'll get a moment of joy when something is working. I also am very much aware of, like when I wrote, co-produced, directed a feature film, and I th thought at the time, oh, when this is done, I'll feel so happy. Well, then few good moments there. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, now we got to get this thing distributed. Uh -huh. That's how life goes. You, you get some moments of happiness, celebrate them, pay attention to them, mm -hmm. but know that they're just a part of it. Most of the time we're in the middle of process. So the main point of the first R, redesign rules for happiness, is you decide. Mm -hmm. You define happiness. And if you will define happiness as not just feeling good, if you can design happiness as being all of these different facets, then you can have some moments of happiness every day. Mm -hmm. Which would be nice. Yeah. The second R, and we're talking about expressing charisma, even when you don't feel happy, is rediscover intrinsic value. Rediscover intrinsic value. Now, I've looked into this and I've seen some of the research about this. Intrinsic value is when you do an action and you get value from it without getting a reward from outside. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting. When I was a kid, I was learning how to swim with the American Red Cross program. Mm -hmm. Now, my father, for whatever reason, decided that he was going to make sure that I wasn't like the other kids rubbing my face and 
and being so conscious of the water on my face, he said, and this was extrinsic, that means outside. He said, every time you do a swimming session and you don't rub your face, here's a quarter. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quarter meant more back then than it does at this second. Uh -huh. But the point is, that was extrinsic reward yes. outside. And that can hurt things. For example, if you go to a kid, there's some research on this. You go to a kid and see that they're drawing. Oh, it's fantastic, they're drawing. And say, I'll give you a dollar for every drawing you finish. At a certain point, they'll equate drawing, not from intrinsic joy, but with extrinsic reward, $1, mm -hmm. and it becomes work. And, yes. they, and then they rebel against work, and they say, yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say they only wanted $5 for something. They do five drawings, and now the intrinsic value has been squeezed out of their drawing, and maybe they don't pursue drawing ever again because the parent or guardian was unskillful. Mm -hmm. They took the joy out out of drawing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about intrinsic value. Organizational theorists Thomas Malone and Mark Lepper identified sources of intrinsic motivation. First, I'm just naming them. Mm -hmm. Challenge, curiosity, control, fantasy, cooperation, competition, recognition. Mm. So the idea is that you do an action and you get something from it. Now, I must say that I'm not pulled to competition first. That's mm -hmm. why I'm not an Olympic athlete, you know, mm -hmm. being number one in the whole world for 10 minutes and then somebody else comes along and runs faster. I, It's not interesting to me. Uh -huh. Cooperation, though, I'm really there. I love working with teams. I love leading teams. That's why I've been a CEO and a director of feature films, things like that. So cooperation is really in there. And curiosity is really there for me, too, mm -hmm. because I want to find out what are we going to say during this broadcast? We're creating this. You and I, cooperating, are creating this, and it fulfills my curiosity. There's intrinsic value in this conversation. Well, I'm glad I could help. And I'm happy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And so I might be charismatic at the second. <laughs> I'm wondering, Joanna, among these different elements of what can be intrinsic value, do any of them connect? Fantasy. Interesting. So the theorists like to say that we use our imagination. Like, for example, people find doing a role-playing game, mm -hmm. for example, to be intrinsically enjoyable mm -hmm. because they get to operate with their imagination. Mm. Yeah, I have a very healthy imagination. Terrific. In fact, you and I have talked about elements of storytelling, mm -hmm. and you really have great skills. I hope you have fun when we're talking about elements of different projects like well, thank you well you're welcome for example some months from now using a pen name i'm going to release a trilogy of novels mm -hmm. called jenna lee storm mm. that's an unusual name jenna j-e-n-a lee l-e-e -E, and second name storm mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway that was supposed to be lightning anyway the point is that i find doing this process intrinsically motivating and that would help one shift so if you're not feeling good if you can do something that puts you on purpose you can do something that has intrinsic motivation to it you can feel better mm -hmm. at least enough to be able to connect with people because you're not distracted by feeling so bad when mm. people feel so bad they tend to retreat like a turtle pulls their head into their shell mm -hmm. and that is not charismatic because charismatic is to make the other person the star mm -hmm. and you're paying attention to them and they feel good and they blossom you might say in the sunshine of your attention and that's the thing you can give people that sunshine of attention even if you don't feel happy on the inside mm -hmm. and that's a central secret or idea that we're sharing in this broadcast mm -hmm. the third r is recharge so we realize that if you're not feeling happy and if you tell other people i don't feel happy you're probably in a space where you feel depleted you feel tired and so i have a phrase take breaks to be brilliant mm. there was a gentleman named w clement stone and every afternoon he would take a nap so that he could go out in the evening and connect with more people he could sell more life insurance mm -hmm. he took a break so that he could be brilliant Mm, mm -hmm. in the early evening. Why, how brilliant of him. It certainly turned out really terrific because he made himself a multimillionaire and it was a lot of fun. And then he became an author and he shared a lot of good ideas with people. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that it is possible for us 
to express charisma, make the other person the star, pay attention to them, have better energy by using these three R's. Oh, this is a great time for a Marku moment. That's when I share an excerpt from one of my 47 books up on Amazon. This time, the excerpt is from the book, Darkest Secrets of Charisma. Subtitle is, Overcome the Lies About Personal Magnetism. Get people to feel your charisma and influence others with your words. Now we're going to go over to page 31. And the concept on this page is move like you're full of confidence. Mm. How do you feel? In typing that question just now, I noticed that I felt a bit off. So I stood up and did a yoga move of reaching my hand skyward and opening the rib cage. Now I feel better. As beings with a physical form, we simply feel stronger when we move better. So that's on page 31. I'm going to move over to another page. Page 33. Take up more space. I learned a helpful technique from Linda Opes, the producer of Sleepless in Seattle, which starred Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, and she produced other hit movies. She said to me, take up more space. By this, she meant make bigger gestures when you talk. You'll even look bigger, and certainly you'll appear more confident. And finally, on this page, there's the concept I call make sure heart faces heart. In order to come across as charismatic, we need to make sure that our heart is facing directly toward the other person's heart so that they know they have our full attention. Mm. A lot of people, especially those who want to run, run away, run away from the conversation, their body telegraphs this mm. by the feet aiming away mm. from the person they're talking to. I've seen that. So the idea is heart faces heart. You could just tell yourself, oh, that's right, heart faces heart. I have done this in my own thoughts, and I had a better connection when I turned my chest to face the other person, heart faces heart. Mm -hmm. So that's the close of the excerpt from my book, Darkest Secrets of Charisma. Joanna, I'm curious. What are you going to keep from this conversation? Use my fantasy and take up space. Okay, so you're going to every week or pretty often participate in certain role-playing games or something like that so that you can enjoy using your imagination? Yes. Right, so you'll take breaks to be brilliant. Mm-hmm. And when you express yourself, you said take up more space. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Tom. This episode was brought to you by... Tom Marcuse, online course at Udemy.com. Yes, that course, I'm so excited about it, is called Success Secrets, Confidence and Skills to Handle Toxic People. And if you type in my name, Tom Marcuse, T-O-M-M-A-R-C-O-U-X, and the word Success Secrets, you'll find the course. Cool. Click to subscribe to this channel. And then you'll be supporting Johanna, me, and our message. Tom helps people in other ways. As a spoken word strategist and executive coach, I help people really connect and get yes. I help them with their speeches, pitches, video marketing, and networking. And I help them prepare for that crucial life-changing meeting. As you're ready to go to the next step, see special videos, find out about my books and coaching at getthebigyes.com forward slash next step. And so remember... Perform at your best with words, strategy, and rehearsal for your success.